right, so where are we right now? Even while the fate of our fragile economy hangs in the fiscal cliff balance, well, for that, let's turn to our distinguished guests. We bring in Peter Goodman. We welcome Peter for the first time. He's the Huffington Post business editor and a former New York Timesman. We also welcome back uh, Republican Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. And for the first time, Hadley Heath, senior policy analyst with the Independent Women's Forum. Okay, so McConnell laughed at the Tim Geithner proposal. And John Boehner says we're in a stalemate. And President Obama himself is kind of getting ugly about this enemies list. We've seen this before from him. Now, look. My simple proposal is the Republicans have to come with a counter offer right now. There's no point in blasting Obama, just a counter offer. And I want to read from today's newspaper, okay? This is what Mitch McConnell, this is what Mitch McConnell said. It was to higher Medicare premiums for the wealthy, an increase in the Medicare eligibility age, and a slowing of cost of living increases for programs like Social Security. And then Republicans would agree to include more tax revenue in the deal, but not from higher tax rates. Now, let's just look at this for a second. Uh, uh, I'll go to you first, Nat. He wants Medicare eligibility. He wants Medicaid reforms. He wants spending cuts. Then he'll talk revenues. Now, that seems reasonable to me. Is he going to do it? Will the Republicans come back with their own counter offer? Well, certainly, Larry, those are elements of a long-term approach to our enormous debt. It's crushing debt. It harms every aspect of American life and enterprise. It also affects our national defense, our vulnerability across the world. Uh, I think we should look very seriously yet again, and the speakers mentioned it, at the 2010 health law, the Affordable Care Act. That is a massive uh, cost weight on the American people. It is a deeply unpopular issue. Still, it was relatively ignored during the election, but it's still an act of issue and we have to provide assurance uh, Americans have told us they told us in the exit polling they've told us in in a number of other forums that they do not want to see burdens increased on our small business but, but McConnell didn't mention that McConnell didn't mention that um, I mean that's a different thing Hadley let me go to you on this McConnell mentioned higher I'm just going to read this. this is from the Wall Street Journal higher Medicare premiums for the wealthy an increase in the Medicare eligibility age the retirement age and a slowing of COLA's cost of living adjustment for Social Security he said Republicans would agree to include more tax revenue in that deal, though not from higher tax rates. Now, that's their position. Isn't it time for them to come out with that? Boehner, McConnell, here it is. Here's what we want right now. Well, from a strategy standpoint, yes, I do think Republicans should put some counter offer on the table. But I think we tend to lose sight of the forest for the trees when we start to talk about the, the aspects of this deal, that deal, the other. What we actually need, we've, we've heard so much talk about what's a responsible fiscal policy. A responsible fiscal policy is a pro-growth fiscal policy. And repealing the health law could be one part of that. I think we should also remember that when we have a pro-growth fiscal policy, the benefits are not not just for the many unemployed Americans who could come back to work, but we have higher revenues as well. All right, Peter Goodman, uh, let's get your take on this. Um, I, I'm, look, I would like personally to repeal the Obamacare. I've never favored it. I continue to oppose it. I want a flat tax, okay? I'm a flat tax guy and have been for about the last 200 years. But I don't think in the next 30 days any of that's going to happen. And so what I'm suggesting is the GOP tactically should come out with something like what McConnell said today in the unified because I think Obama's bluffing. Now, I just want to ask you before I get to the sure. Obama bluff, what are the odds that the GOP will come out? What are the odds that Mitch McConnell is really leading here? Uh, I think they're slim, and I think they're slim <laughs> because the Republican Party has been hijacked by a bunch of ideological extremists who don't want to do a deal. They didn't want an economic recovery. They bet on bad economic policies, sabotaging any possibility of an Obama recovery. So, and, and now that, you know, Governor Romney is no longer and the electoral politics are behind us, they're really in a box. On the one hand, they now are tied to the idea that they have to invest in something that's pro-growth, though this idea that you re repeal Obamacare and we get growth I mean that's that's but why is it unreasonable like for the GOP to want to extend the eligibility age for Medicare to want to um, fix colas for Social Security these things have been around for a long you're time balancing these, the budget the on Democrats the of vulnerable have, people. Democrats have supported these kinds of things they essentially want to means test Medicare they actually are saying I'm not sure I agree with this but they want a progressive shift in that well, why is that well, look, so, why is that a bad efficient thing? use of Medicare dollars is a good thing however going after seniors who are now eligible at 60 
65 and bumping up the eligibility age, when you're talking about people who are, in some cases, long-term unemployed, who are in jobs where they're making a fraction of what they were making 25 years ago, who can't pay their bills, let's remember where this deficit came from. It came from the Iraq War run-off budget. Uh, it came from a financial crisis that rewarded a lot of executives in, who were still paying time for low you, capital time for you to step in. Why By the way, I just want to say, there's a fabulous people. article on the front page of Investor's Business Daily, which I recommend to you. A fabulous article. I'm going to talk about it on tomorrow's radio show about the benefits of the Bush tax cuts, which, by the way, generated higher revenues. But let's not go there today. For who, though? I want to get you, for everybody. Well, In fact, the everybody. middle class. So that's why got median the, wages actually the middle, dropped during do you the know, Bush years? Do you know, just look at the numbers that Obama uses. If you repeal the top tax rates, you're supposed to make $800 billion. If you repeal the whole right. bill, you're supposed to lose $400, $4.5 .4 So it all went to right. the middle class. So I got to challenge your facts on that. That went to the middle class. But do you think right now that there is a chance, I mean, responding to what Peter said, do you think that Obama is going to cold shoulder the GOP? And here's why I'm saying this. Let me just go one more thing. Sure. I think he's bluffing. I think the last thing in the world Obama wants is a stalemate that will lead to all the taxes going up, all of them, mm -hmm. and will lead to a recession. A and then he would be Herbert Hoover Obama, right. and his second term and his legacy would be completely wrecked. Right. That's why I think Obama's bluffing, and the GOP needs to counter. Well, you know, Larry, there's a distinct philosophical difference, obviously, between the House majority, which Peter was elected overwhelmingly in 2010 and resoundingly uh, re-elected in 20. 12 across the country. Sure. They have a strong voice. They have a position the American people have embraced. The president, I think, Larry, is over interpreting his mandate in his second reelection. I think he feels empowered in ways that he actually has not been by the American people. He's running a very risky game. This is not where the American people want to be. Uh, and I think it's definitely up to uh, those who talk about these things in the media and the, the American people to be aware of the consequences consequences of what he is proposing. Well, that's the thing. Hadley, there's no spending cuts in his proposal. The idea at one point with Simpson Bowles was four dollars of spending cuts for one dollar revenue increase. This one is the backwards. This is uh, a dollar spending cut for four dollars of revenue increases. Isn't the Republicans best calling card to insist on strong spending cuts and entitlement reform? Isn't that their best counterpunch? Absolutely. One of the reasons President Obama has come into these negotiations from what he believes is a position of strength is because he's looking at polls that show that the majority of Americans will blame a GOP-held mm -hmm. House of Representatives if we do indeed go off of a fiscal cliff. So he's coming into this with ba basically a list of demands mm -hmm. without making any concessions. He'll it is be blamed historically. Let me just tell you something. Yes, you if he has a second recession on his watch, the history will be written that he presided over two recessions. That's why I refer to him as Herbert Hoover. I would hope so. But his eye is not on but policy, it's on election. politics. Yeah, but, but and, I'm, and I'm just saying he can't play that game. He can bluff, but he can't play right. it's, it's not a bluff. Right. This, this is not a bluff. You think he would take a second recession? Well, I, a second recession in, in the if, immediate... If all the tax cuts are no, repealed... No, I, I think he assumes... We're going into recession. I think he assumes that even That's the what Republicans even the Congressional would. Budget Office said. You think he would risk a second recession that would destroy his second term? I think he understands that the law of the land today is that everybody gets a tax increase, and he's trying to give 98% of the public a tax reduction, and essentially the Republican Party states asking. its position I'm asking saying something they'd rather that Larry know, Ellison get a tax I, I cut... I know what his policy than, is. Than I understand that. You want to raise the top tax rate. But what I'm saying is, will he actually actually allow all of the tax? So you're saying the Republicans can stand him off. And a standoff means all the tax rates go up. And if that happens, we're going to have a recession. And that's Herbert Hoover and Obama. Larry, I don't think he'll let that They will get the blame the for Republicans. it. But historically, no. Obama will get the blame for it. His legacy will get the blame for it. The Republicans are the advocates for the American people and for growth, as Hadley has said, because a pro-growth policy is the only way we're going to get out of this mess. I give you the exactly. last word. We don't just want to avoid the fiscal cliff. Of course, both parties want to avoid a fiscal cliff, but what conservatives want is to make 180 degree turn in fiscal policy towards lower taxes, lower spending, and greater prosperity, and, and most importantly, opportunity all right. for all. I love that. I want you to talk that through with Peter Goodman. We'll talk about it. Thank you. Peter Goodman, appreciate it. Thank Nan you. Hayworth and Hadley Heath, welcome.